Hello everyone who's viewing this video. <laughs> this is Julie from the Scraps of My Life. And this video is actually going to be mostly about my the beginning of my journey into watercolors. Um, I wanted to document this from the beginning because I was watching a video by this young lady. Um, I'll have to get her name and post it. I just absolutely adore her style and even her choice of music. Uh, I just There's just some people you click with and um, she just, you know, I just clicked with her. I connected with her style in watercolors and even though she's not a um, proclaimed uh, master or anything. Um, I just liked her style. It's, it's like I could, you know, relate to her. For one thing, uh, she does a lot of florals and I love florals and flowers. I always have. My daughter's always complained about how much I love flowers. But uh, anyway, I wanted to document this. Um, because you know I saw her and she did a what she did was she did a uh, floral composition that she had done when she first began watercolor and I think three years later she did the same composition uh, again and the difference you know wasn't huge but the colors were the colors were amazing so that's what I hope to do and I'm documenting this for myself but also if anyone you know this is kind of like a challenge because you know I am coming out of the scrapbook community is what I'll call it um, into the art community and um, you know that doesn't you know it's, it's really it's just going from one art to another I mean it's all art I mean if you see some of the books the ladies uh, make on YouTube there's no way you can deny that it's a form of art so um, there's a lot of um, new stuff going on in scrapbooking well it's it's old but it's new okay it's been around I have magazines full of you know textured art I call it but it's collage Collage has been around forever. It's one of my very first loves as a kid uh, when I was introduced to it in school. Just fell in love with it. And um, also pastels, oil pastels. Oh my goodness, when I was introduced to that, I was like head over heels. It doesn't matter. And then, I, then it went on to um, um, acrylics and textured, you know, texture medium used in acrylic painting and just one thing after another and you know I sit back and I look over my life and I think why didn't I do these things that I loved why didn't I ever step out and just do them so this 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 right here I'm going to show you this right here and this is just one this is this is actually the newer one I actually have the original um, the yellow I think it is it's not in here under my nose right now <clears throat> but I have had decoupage medium in my closet my craft closet for years so I bought this one because it's newer and uh, the other one was like partially dried up that's how long I've had it in my closet and and a few other mediums as such to use with paper and cloth and whatnot and I never, ever even opened it to use it. Because I have always been this type of per person. I am a perfectionist. Okay? And if I can't pick something up and do it right out of the jar, so to speak, um, exactly how it should be done to perfection, then I'm not I'm not going to do it. Well, that's kind of foolish because when I started doing the things that I do do, which was 
<laughs> that was kind of funny, wasn't it? Which was being a seamstress and then scrapbooking and junk journaling and stamping and um, the things that I do, okay, and even um, quilting, uh, crochet, all these things that I do, that I did actually take in my hands and do, I did not do them to perfection when I started them. So I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm bumping myself on the head and saying to myself, why did I wait so long to do the things that I love? And the things that I love most and that are most dear to me are the things I can touch with my hands. So when I look back over my life from a child to this day, the, the, the bits of art that intrigue me and hold me in a, in a halted breath the most are the things I can put my hands on, such as decoupage and sewing textiles and pastels, oil pastels. Oh my goodness, there, I went through this true love affair with and never touched, I mean, not other than the than to inter, introduction to it in school where I was given them to play with. Uh, and for a little small period of time, I was very, very young. So I was kind of in some way discouraged from that because of the messiness of it. And I did not, didn't know enough about it to, to work with it and left it, left it behind, but have always adored it. Anything, pottery, pottery was my first love in school. I was introduced to it in the third grade. And our art teacher, um, we made these, well, I made a, he was teaching us how to roll and do the roll, you know, all that technique and wet it and put it together. Um, I made a flower pot that was pretty big. And I, I have so many times wished that I had that. It got broken through the years moving in the military. But um, that is my first love. And I am determined to one day learn how to throw pottery. But right now, like I said, I, I have been reintroducing myself back into the scrapbooking world. Not that I ever stopped it because I've got a ton of books and books that are made that need covers put on them and a book that uh, I made and then it, it fell apart because it was so heavy. I used file folders in it and I, it was just not the right kind of binding. And then I've recently done a journal, a couple journals and also uh, garden glue books and all that sort of thing. So to, this is easy for me. This is, this is like easy and fun and but I wanted to, I, I was thinking about getting into the collage because I love collage. I mean, it's just so creative. It's just as creative to me as the, as the books are because you can just, you know, I was sitting watching a video. Uh, actually, it wasn't a video. It was a live stream last night with uh, one of the groups that I'm presently a part of, trying to be a part of. <laughs> I'm not good on social things. And she was showing how she, she called it tag board, and she takes an entire 12 by 12 piece of like, um, you know, heavy chipboard or, or light chipboard or the back of a um, paper album and uses it and, and does a whole sheet of it and then cuts it up into um, tags. And I had never seen anyone, you know, do that before. So I thought, you know, and, and so she was talking and, and doing her stuff down there. And I said, you know, I'm going to grab, I have these tags here, these large tags. And I said, I'm going to grab one and try it right now, you know, because I have the decoupage medium, obviously, sitting here. And I have been doing a little decoupage. I did it on the front of that book. So I sit here and I made this tag last night. Just, just made it, just, you know, because she was saying, just use your scraps. Just use what you have. And um, so I did that last night. And so I'm, I've been wanting to, you know, get into the 
the messy part of the bookmaking. I've been wanting to do, you know, some decoupage. So I even ordered some um, of the of the medium where you know you you run it through the stencils. And right now it just went right out of my mind what it what it is. But anyway, long story short, uh, I want to record this endeavor. And um, so this is what I started with. Okay, I went and I purchased at Hobby Lobby. Uh, the absolute worst paper I, I think that a beginner can start with is, is the rough and didn't even know what that was until recently when I purchased uh, a few books well I, I purchased this book and but then I've actually been online uh, listening to some folks chat back and forth about the, the different aspects of watercolor the brushes the papers and all that stuff so found a really good source for that unbelievably so with all this you know with all the videos and things and the information that's out there I'm surprised that it's like everything's just kind of fell right in my lap I found you know that young lady that I really connected with and then I found these guys talking about all this you know the paper the brushes and the uh, paints and uh, what they use and of course you know it's it's not extremely as as different in the watercolor world as it is in some things with what people use but oh my gosh there's like tons of brushes but anyway I am trying to narrow brushes is my I have narrowed it down to the paint I have narrowed not this paint okay this I think this was a mistake I don't mean any reflection on any company but right here I wanted to show you now maybe it was me Maybe it's just a bad batch <laughs> of paint. Um, I'm not certain what it is. Um, and while I'm looking for that, I had intended on maybe trying the, the Copics, the markers. And I just, in my brain, without doing it on paper, I could not understand how you mix an alcohol marker. Because to me, it's like alcohol dries really quickly. I have the bottom line is is I have my own art that I draw and that I need to get back to drawing and this is this is this is another reason I've leaned towards the the uh, watercolor I like uh, I like how it looks I love this you know that it can be sheer like this and I love that you can build it up and make it dark like this and even more so uh, so these are just, you know, single colors. But these colors are from the, this Koi, uh, which is a Secura company. I think I'm pronouncing that right. I'm not certain. So I was just sitting here. I pulled out this piece of paper. Now, this paper is not even watercolor paper. This is just a smooth, nice drawing paper is what this is that I bought that I draw on. And... Um, it is just, I said, well, I'm going to grab a piece of it. I'm just going to, you know, piddle with this and see what happens. See what it looks like in my hand. You know, how I like the feel. And the kit, the little kit here came with a brush, a water brush. So you can put the water inside and it pushes the paint down through the tip of the brush. It is a, uh, it's not a, you know, animal hair. It's just the, um, you know, the, the white brush. So I just took it and I was dabbling into the paint and I started, I said, well, let me choose this color and I, you know, I started with the colors. Then I went over to the red and went back and did some wash over here with two different colors. I did a little mixing, just, just a little, just to see, you know. And uh, so then when I came back to the red, I brought over here and you can see uh, that it got really grainy I mean just that quickly and um, now someone can possibly tell me why it did that is it the paint is it the quality of the paint is it that the paint is bad you see it right here really good in this H I mean well it's just a crosshatch actually that I did and I was trying to I thought well maybe it's just in my you know my brush I mean I didn't leave it I was just constantly painting so, um, yeah, so 
you know, I said, what happened here? You know, between the time that I left the red and came back to it, you know, from doing the colors over here. And I had some water. I was rinsing my brush. You know, I don't know what happened here. And so maybe someone can tell me. And maybe someone can enlighten me on this paint brand. Because I don't see that. I don't see this uh, in anyone's videos. Um, in the watercolor world so far. And so maybe it's not a great, you know, brand of paint. Um, I did see, you know, I, I just figured since it was a mid, you know, I figured it was at least student grade, you know. Anyway, so, um, yeah, maybe you can enlighten me on that part. Because I, that is one thing I have not found out. Because it's supposed to do this. It's supposed to be, you know, flow. Paint is supposed to flow. It's not supposed to cake up and... And look like that so anyway so yeah so I was gonna talk well actually I did I tossed this in the trash without the notes on it and then I remembered that young lady's video where she had done a painting when she first started and then three years later she did the same painting again so to speak and it, it looked almost exactly alike except that her for her colors I mean her form and her uh, you know, her detail was wonderful to begin with, in my opinion. <laughs> uh, but she um, redid it and her colors were just so much more deep and layered and amazing. So she had learned quite a lot in three years' time. And I thought, well, you know, if I can do that, at least that'll be, you know, the most I can hope for. <laughs> and it'll work for what I want to achieve. You know, I'm not looking to be a master in, in this. And so, um, so I did. And so I bought probably the worst paper. I mean, this is just, you know, it's all preference, really. There's, there's, there's great paint and there's great brushes and there's great paper. But then there is paper that's a little tiny bit less and it's still good, you know. So, um. Anyway, in the past two weeks that I've been looking into this very slowly, very cautiously, because, you know, I could not decide if I really wanted to do this. This is very expensive, as any, almost any hobby is to get into. Um, you know, I wanted to enter it cautiously because I thought, you know, if this isn't going to hold, if this isn't the medium for me, because there is a brush between me <laughs> and that paper. <laughs> and I know me. I know that I like, so that is the issue I have with drawing too. Uh, I, I love to draw, but it's like I don't have, you know, the flow of hand, my hands in it. And uh, I, don't, I just have this touch thing, as you know, it's just, it's just hard for me when I can't put my hands in it. So, uh, but you can with drawing, you can, you know, shade it and all that by hand. And yes, I have. And, but I never added color to my drawings. And it was because I could not decide what avenue of color I wanted to, to use, you know. And then there was this huge thing across the internet, just like a, a flame and fire, bam, that went through YouTube, and everybody was using Copic markers, and they are artist quality markers, I just couldn't wrap my head around them, because they too, you know, expensive, not cheap, and then there are pencils, and I did buy me a, a nice artist set of uh, color pencils, but they weren't quite the medium I wanted either. I mean, I like pencils. I do because there's, you have such control over them. Um, it's easy to, fairly easy to fix if you make a mistake. Very easy. It's not like paint. There it is. And, <laughs> you know, and I did find out that you can pick, even pick watercolor up uh, with sponges and, um, gum paste and or whatever gum erasers or whatever um, like I said I'm still learning and um, so I just couldn't decide what color medium I wanted to do and so I stopped I just stopped that's what I do 
<laughs> I get hung up on something and I stop it. <laughs> it's crazy that I do that, but but I do because I cannot go forward <laughs> if I can't make a decision, right? So I stopped drawing. And of course, you know, it wasn't just that. Also, you know, I, we, I have moved several times uh, since, since, well, in, in, in the past several years. So yeah, my life has like been an upheaval and I have not seemingly been able to do anything, to concentrate on anything except what I know, uh, which is scrapbooking. And that's what I've been doing. And uh, I have, my husband will tell you, well, he, matter of fact, he, made, he used to make the comment all the time, if Michaels ever goes under, because that's what well we had at the time, we didn't have Hobby Lobby, and now I do, yay. <laughs> uh, no, we don't have a Michaels here, but where I lived, we, there was only Michaels and AC Moore. He said, if they ever go under, then they can all come and shop at, your, you know, at, at our house. <laughs> So, yeah, I spent a lot of money. I had a shop at one time, a store. Me and my sister had one together, and then I had one by myself for a while. And then I closed it with all the moving and whatnot. It just became too much to keep up with. And uh, so, yeah, I, it's, I had it. It's there. It's, you know, it's hands-on. I can touch it. I can feel it. I mean, look at this, right? I mean, just look at this. This, this is art right here. I mean, look at that. It's beautiful. It's embossed, foiled, uh, just gorgeous. I mean, gorgeous. And I intend on putting this in my, I am working on an album right now, uh, hopefully to um, record my watercolor because, see, I've already started writing about it, uh, to record my watercolor process. And I found this paper that looks like someone else's watercolor or something, you know. It looks like watercolor to me. And uh, see that? And I'm, I'm trying to put it together. It's so hard because I want it to be perfect, but you know what? I'm like, you know. But anyway, I want to put this paper in there somewhere because this side is clearly writable. Uh, I just, it's just beautiful. So it has to go in there. And I bought a couple sheets. At Hobby Lobby, and I want to stick that in there. Okay, so let me know about the koi. I am in the process for three days now. I for all week I have been looking at watercolor paints, brushes, papers. I did actually. Uh, I can't put my hand on it here because it's not right here. But I did buy some um, arches, cotton. Uh, watercolor paper from Amazon and uh, I bought that because the young lady that I listened to that I'm that I'm going to use as my my little guide <laughs> to help me get started in this and hopefully I can add others to that and I have already I've added uh, you know the informational videos about you know the different items were, that I'm going to need uh, her, she also used these Pentel aqua brushes, aqua, aqua sh <laughs> anyway, she used these and she, she liked them. And these are, I mean, I know that this isn't uh, professional and uh, I am looking for brushes. I did buy some brushes and maybe someone can give their opinion on these too. I mean, I know they're, you know, there's, there's different levels of of uh, everything you use in, in any art. There's a, there's the cheap version, there's a student version, and then there's the artist quality. And I figured when it came to the paper and the paint that I should choose artist quality. So I have um, got in my cart in Amazon the Cinelier, 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 it's a French artist watercolor paints. I am going to get the tubes and I'm going to get the pans. And uh, because when I, this is a, this is a pan paint and I was thinking it takes a lot to get this color up. Okay. And that's just out of experience. And then I heard some of the more professionals talk and say, 
you know, when you're beginning, you might not want to begin with a pan. And so the tubes are wet, and it's a wet paint, and it's easier to get it into your brush. It's easier to mix it. It's easier to add it to the paper. So I'm going to get both because I, I, I did like this for especially, especially for doing like a tag or a small pay or a small project or taking it out eventually, eventually hoping to go out and do some art in the field. But I picked up these Master's Touch Fine. I'm going to try these. I haven't tried these yet. Uh, these are, I think, synthetic. Let me see. Um, these are like multi-purpose uh, brushes. They're Taclon. And um, I am right now not actually seeing... It doesn't well they're they're definitely not sable because if they were it would say so and the young the young lady I'll call her that wrote this book Claire Waite Brown said that the best uh, I bought this because of the I love florals and clearly I'm I'm going I grow sunflowers I haven't I haven't for several years because I haven't had my garden but I'm determined to grow some this year I start a little small garden this year and uh, but she tells you in here uh, that the sable brushes right here in this section uh, are the best um, she said round brushes are extremely versatile enabling you to make a variety of different brush marks and paint linear detail the best brushes are Kalinsky sable which are expensive but last a lifetime so I would rather you know my my problem is is not knowing what is a good brush because now I know that because of her because of the gentleman that I listen to speak back and forth on YouTube I know what are good brushes now I just need to know which brushes I need to start with and um, that's what I'm trying to figure out I know that I need a wash and I know that a lot of the masters just use a large to me it looks like a wash brush but it can come from really fat to really a thin detail and that's very important that it holds its tip when you're painting especially in watercolor and um, but then you also need a brush that you can you know rough be rough with it and then it comes back to its form so but the brushes are very important and of course that's true in all forms of painting so I'm trying to figure that out right now and uh, in the meantime I'm going to go ahead and order my paints today and I might play with them a little bit with these water brushes here that are fillable and um, you know just 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 to get used to the paint and used to the water and used to the use of it of the water and of course I've got to get my paper um, and I'm you know I'm, I'm getting ready to order the paper and the paint both of them and then of course there's mediums that you can add to the paint. I'm not going to get into all that right now. I'm going to start with the basics, which is the paint, the paper, and the water, <laughs> and the brush. And I'm going to start with that. So anyway, all this said, just to document my journey. This is the beginning of my journey. And if anyone wants to join me out of the scrapbook community that you've always had a love in your heart for something and you've always hesitated to do it because because and you can fill in the blank um, and really there, there's no reason to hesitate and um, if you're to the point in your life where you can take on a new learn something new then I encourage you to join me and I, I'm not being a teacher or know-it-all I'm just learning and it would be fun to learn with someone else yes it would and if anybody wants to join me then you know leave a message on this sad little video right here that I'm just going on and on and I don't even know what I've said altogether but I, anyway the long story short is you know if you want to join me uh, I'm happy to share anything and I probably will be when I get my paints I'm going to show them to you when I get my brushes when I get all my stuff I'm going to be so thrilled and um, 
I'm going to show it all to you. And in the meantime, while I'm waiting on all that stuff, I'm going to be working on my book. I'm making me a book so that I can record this because, again, another thing I love to do is write. And um, I'm going to be recording that in a book, you know, that I make with my hands, of course. <laughs> and... Um, and I'm I'm gonna try to put some of my work. I'm just like I, I just folded this. There's a lot of writing on the inside of this. Questions I have, like I'll sh I'll really quickly share with you. Um, I wrote two 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 things up here that I gathered from doing this little page right here. I decided that beginners should definitely start with two paints rather than pans. The fillable water brush is almost a necessity for the pan paints. But I have since learned, since I wrote this, that there are there is this um, thing that wets your brush that this gentleman invented, and I am going to invent my you know make my own my own form of it somehow. I'm in my brain. I'm working it out. And then the second thing I did was, in light of a wet on wet technique, why not paint on get on just gesso can canvas? Hmm. <laughs> So that's something I am dying to try. I have mentioned that to my husband several times. I said, you know, um, I know that you can't, you can't set a watercolor. And I did learn that, thank goodness, before I actually tried it. Because I do have an easel my husband purchased for me uh, a couple Christmases ago to start doing whatever kind of I was preparing all along for, for a few years now to do some type of color in my art and um and I chose watercolor okay and this is where I'm gonna start with my color I'm not gonna do markers I'm not gonna do pencils I'm starting with watercolor and so you can't put your canvas or your paper up on an easel and do a wet on wet because then the everything's gonna run down so you pretty much have to leave it fat flat so I can you know I can sit here and you you know you can tilt it a bit but you know you, you have to be careful Depends on what you do. So yes, I've learned. I have learned a lot over the past couple weeks, and before I actually get to doing any of it. So yeah, this is going to be fun, and I am going to enjoy every minute of it, and I look forward to it. And so I'm going to get off here and get busy on my book so I can get it finished. I've already started writing and putting sticking things in, and it's not even made yet. So I got to get off of here and get that figured out. And uh, so if you want to join me, just leave a message below and uh, let me know. And we will share each other's journey. And uh, hopefully someone, someone somewhere will join me. If not, I'm going to do it anyway, and I'm going to document it anyway. So everybody have a super great day. Thanks for listening to me rattle on. And I will be back to show you my book hopefully before too awfully long and then also my paints and stuff so talk to you later bye